stability, growth and public services. These were the themes of this year's autumn statement, delivered, of course, by Chancellor Jeremy Hunt with the support of Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The Chancellor acknowledged there are substantial tax increases in this package, albeit there's been no increase in the headline rates of tax all set against what the Chancellor called a tough global headwinds, a pretty difficult economic backdrop. And here is that difficult economic backdrop as laid out by the Office for Budget Responsibility. The UK is now in recession, says Britain's fiscal watchdog. GDP growth this year will be 4.2%, but that overwhelmingly reflects the post-COVID bounce back we saw in the first six months of 2022, compared, of course, to the first half of 2021 when we were still in lockdown. But economic contraction is now happening this autumn, and that's why it will continue into next year with GDP contracting by 1.4% in 2023, says the OBR. That's roughly similar to the downturn that we saw back in 1991, and it's about a third of the downturn we saw after the global financial crisis in 2008. Cost of living squeeze, that will continue, says the OBR. Price rises will be ongoing. We're going to see inflation during 2022 averaging 9.1% for the year as a whole. It will slow to 7.2% next year. That's still historically pretty high with the prices of goods and services that we rely on increasing into next year as well. The big economic picture here as a result of this autumn statement, there'll be a fiscal consolidation of £54 billion over five years. That split £24 billion of tax rises and £30 billion of spending cuts. The tax rises, though, they're largely what the government's opponents would call stealth taxes. What we're seeing is tax thresholds being frozen until 2028. The personal allowance after which you start paying income tax at 20 percent, that's going to be frozen until 2028 at £12,570. The higher rates will be frozen at £50,270. The top rates will be lowered. So you start paying 45 percent after £125,000 of earnings just over rather than £150,000. I've done my sums and it strikes me that if you earn £33,000, the average wage, you'll be paying an extra two and a half grand in income tax by 2028. And if you earn over £50,000, you'll be paying an extra six and a half thousand pounds in tax by that same year. But the big increase in taxes, it's not on income, it's on the energy companies, so-called windfall taxes on energy providers operating in the North Sea and elsewhere. Their profits will be taxed not at 25 percent, but 35 percent in addition to existing rates of corporation tax and energy generator profits. The energy companies that provide the energy to us, they'll face a windfall tax of 45 percent on their profits until 2028. That raises 14 billion pounds of the overall tax rises that we saw. The spending, in addition to that, some other measures, electric vehicles, they'll pay road tax from 2025, by which time the Chancellor says around half the cars and vans on our roads will be EVs. And also the residential stamp duty cuts introduced by former, former Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng in his mini budget back in September, they will only now last until 2025. Former Prime Minister Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng, they, they raised the threshold up until which you pay no stamp duty from 125 to 250,000 pounds. They introduced more generous stamp duty thresholds for first time buyers. Those concessions now will only last until 2025. And on to the spending cuts. And if the Chancellor was vague about where his tax rises are coming in terms of not raising headline rates, he was even more vague in terms of the spending cuts. Spending will rise, he says, in real terms, that's after inflation, every year for five years, but a lower rate than we previously thought. We don't know when those spending rises will come in. We don't know what departments they will apply to. But we do know that the Chancellor has earmarked an extra £2.3 billion per year for the next two years for education. That's a 4% rise in the education budget and an extra £3.3 billion every year for the next two years for the NHS. That's a 2% rise. 
The good news for lower income households is that benefits will be uprated by 10.1% a year. That was the rate of inflation in September. That will kick in from next April. And also to cheers across the Tory backbenches, shooting Labour's fox, the Tories will implement their manifesto promise of the triple lock, increasing the basic state pension again by 10.1%, the basic state pension going up by £870 a year. Anyone who says there are easy answers, they're not being straight with the British people, said Jeremy Hunt. But is he being straight, relying on stealth taxes and also spending cuts that he won't outline? There's so much more in this autumn statement to get our teeth into. The energy price cap, that becomes less generous from next April. The cap going up from two and a half to three thousand pounds. And there's to be a clampdown on the economically inactive claiming benefits, the numbers of whom who've stored have soared. But the big picture is one of tax rises and spending cuts into the teeth of a recession. That's a policy that's meant to promote stability, but it poses big risks too. Liam, thank you very much indeed.